Detroit, your ethnic superstation. Now, 690 days, 689. <laughs> Georgia, good morning, and thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. Uh, I want to welcome you to the show, to Good Morning Michigan, thank and you. to share with our listener your uh, uh, story. Also, uh, I want to tell them about our very long relationship. Outside my professional career as a journalist, we have very unique uh, relationship. Uh, you and your husband, the first couple I've met, and we're still having uh, this very unique relationship. Thank you for coming today and share your story with our listeners. Well, thank you, Leila. It's a <coughs> pleasure to be here. I'm honored, honored, blessed to be with you. I guess we've been friends since uh, 2001. I mean, the first couple I met uh, during my first uh, job, I met with Georgia and Steve Coase, and it's been plus. They've been so great friends, and uh, I don't consider them friends anymore. I guess we, we, we're more families, you know. <laughs> So I'd like to begin with the lovely and talented Leila Al Husseini, who is our winner this year for the Communications and Arts category. <laughs> Leila was born in Damascus, Syria, and graduated from the University of Damascus. After immigrating to the United States, Ms. Al Husseini established her own company, and through U.S. Chum Media, she has managed a number of cultural projects within the last two years to help bridge relationships between the U.S. and the Middle East. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you our winner in the Communications and Arts category, Layla Abhusseini. أنا فخورة كتير ببنتي بهاليوم هذا اللي أخذت فيه هالأورد هذا رغم الصعوبات والمشاق اللي هي كمرت بحياتها. It's no surprise she won an award like this because it's just a matter of time before she gets recognized for who she is and she's what I love about Layla is that she's very persistent. Like she gets an idea in her head and she sees it from start to finish. And when you see Layla with an idea in her head. <laughs> Beware, because she's she's not going to let it go, and she's going to bring in everyone who can help her, and she's going to make it happen. And I love I love that about Layla. وصلت لها المرحلة هاي اللي هي خلتني أسعد ورغم إني أنا فارقت اليوم ورايح على دمشق بتمنى لك السعادة شروع حياتها وإن شاء الله توصل لأعلى وأعلى بما تصبو إليه في المستقبل قريب يا رب العالمين. Actually, we arrived in Dearborn um, just before 9-11, and I was ready to teach English as a second language. Most of my students were um, Arabic-speaking women, and my first day of teaching was 9-12, and all my students were um, scared. <coughs> and they said, show me, tell me what I can do to, to, in English to communicate 
that, that this has affected me too. 9-11 is an awful situation. So many people have left hard situations to come to the U.S. and now they're facing 9-11 here. And so my first experience in um, Dearborn was to help guide these women into um, just how to communicate in English, the, the, the sorrow and the struggle they felt. And, um, Wait a minute. Before we translate this, Sammy, I would like to focus on one thing here. You didn't really have the, this fear from your neighborhood after September 11, living in Dearborn, Georgia, honestly. You know, I think before we came here, yes, everyone said, oh, you can't go there, it's dangerous. You know, but I came from Colorado, right? and the, just before we got married in 1999, I remember sitting with the wedding cake coordinator, and on the news we were watching um, the shootings at Columbine, and I said, how is this a good and safe place to be, and this isn't? We, we trust God and we go where he leads and we're happy in our neighborhood. And we've, it's no less dangerous or more dangerous than living in this place. We don't know where the dangerous people are. People who live in Dearborn, who have business in Dearborn, the mayor of Dearborn, all talking tonight about Pastor Terry Jones and his plan to protest in their city. Jones is the controversial pastor from Florida who put the Muslim holy book on trial and then burned it. Now he wants to hold a protest in front of the Islamic Center of America on Ford Road. There's a program going on inside at this very moment. They're expected to come outside. There are hundreds of people inside, and they are of all faiths. <laughs> At all for the provocation, but nevertheless, the provocation has been made. And so here we are. I always think that uh, the more diverse a group it is, the more representative of creation it is. The more to raise our families in this community and to work. And is not this the experience of Dearborn? as well as the experience of our wider community. And if there's anything that we have to be thankful for to Mr. Jones is, is thank you for bringing us together. There's a promise in the Bible in that, 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 that says that in the end, there will be people worshiping God from every tongue, every tribe, every nation, and every language. And that's what I believe, and that's why I live my life thinking that that life is richer and deeper and even more spiritual when I know and love people who are different from me. Because I can only know so much if everybody's the same as I am. You are uh, secure for me in this country, <laughs> truly. Aww. You are so sweet. <laughs> Thank you for always being here for me, truly, yeah. from heart. I'm yeah. saying this. Well, and it really was an impressive sight. I want to show you the video from Chopper 7 as hundreds of people came out of the mosque. Sometimes people intend something for bad, and God works good things. And that this uh, coming together is one of those good things. Uh, I mean, it's a wonderful opportunity to bear witness uh, in our community. Georgia, you're married to a dear friend to me, uh, Stephen Coast. Um, I would like to speak shortly about this experience uh, after shortly you met it to him. Tell us about this time, period of time, specifically in your life. Just shortly after we got right. married? Yeah, we had plans to travel the world, uh, see the world, figure out how and where we fit into this big picture. And um, shortly thereafter, I was, uh, we were traveling in Cyprus and Greece and visiting, I wanted Steve to meet my family, my extended family, and um, shortly after that, I was suffering from headaches, and Steve said, you know, I, I don't, we've only been married a year, but you've been talking about these headaches for too long, let's go see the doctor. And so I went, and they said, oh, you know, we're just going to take some blood tests, and they diagnosed me with uh, chronic leukemia um, within maybe three weeks from the when I, when I went in with headaches to when I had a, my first bone marrow biopsy and they confirmed that this is what I had and it was shattering to us. We wanted to, one, of course I wanted to have a family and I wanted to travel. And um, my doctor said, you need to stay here, we need to take care of you and we can't think about a family right now because we need to take care of your health. Georgia, I would like to 
picked you after 14 years of uh, dealing with this health issues. How did you deal with this daily uh, maybe uh, health issues? I mean, how was the impact on your life, kids? You have uh, like uh, three beautiful yes. kids. I would like you to speak to us about your kids, your family, how did that uh, impact your family, your husband, uh, your relationship with God. You, I know that you so believe in Jesus and uh, uh, in our life and miracles. And you know what? You are such a believer, a human being. Tell me. Thank you, Leila. I appreciate you saying that. Uh, yeah, I... I know that God is good all the time. And though I didn't understand why I was sick and why all my plans are changing, I trust that God has something good planned for me. And so, you know, I got in the I got on a good medication. It was just out by the FDA very, very I was actually in the clinical trial for the medication. It was approved right away and it, it um, I responded quickly to it. So I, w I felt like I had a second chance in life to be strong and to be healthy. And But the healthier I was on the medication, I thought, why can't I live a normal life? I'm young, I want to have a family, why can't I do this? And so I prayed and Steve said, well, I don't want to risk our lives for you to have children. That, that doesn't seem like a good idea. But, um, so his first priority was you. Georgia. Yes, yes, you. of course. Not that, I mean, having kids. Right. right, because, right. He, yeah, he, that, that was a That's risk. the most important for him. He didn't want to be a single yeah. father. Yeah. I want to just focus today about our unique relationship, me and you, and your uh, being here in Dearborn um, neighborhood, your friend from Arab community. Uh, you love the Arabic language. You, you're trying to teach your kids the Arabic language. I mean, um, I want to just to focus that 15 a very unique friend to me in every single stage in my life up and down also you stood up for me and helped me out uh, like a family i didn't have a family here when i came to united states but you were my family you and your husband tell us please tell our listener how is your, uh, your relationship with your neighbor in dearborn and tell us how to know more about you from your blog okay thank you yes um you know, I believe in the words of Jesus the Messiah. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And we wanted to move to Dearborn and get to know and love our neighbors. And we have received so much love. We have learned, I have learned generosity, hospitality. I feel like my life is richer because I have neighbors that are different from me. And it just is a blessing in my life. And as far as my blog goes, I, um, I feel like this having cancer has given me a second lease on life and being healthy and now having kids, having gone through chemo and the miracle of trusting God to have them, I, I feel like I could share that journey. And when I get out passionate about my health or what people eat or how, you know, taking care of it, just getting enough sleep, I, Steve says, will you write that down? Will you go put it on a blog? Because you've told me these stories over and over. <laughs> So um, I just, I started the blog, The Crazy Edamame. Um, edamame is one of my favorite vegetables, high protein, high fiber. <laughs> and um, anyway, and just how to help my family and others be healthy. As an American, how can we build more bridges with the American community? What is the, what is the secret to it? I don't know. Um, I just, I, I just want people to have open hearts to learn and receive from each other. And I, I feel like, you know, I have a Palestinian neighbor, and she, she suffers, her, her family suffers, and if she weren't my neighbor, I don't think I would feel that and know that as well, because I don't get into politics, but I want to love my neighbors. How about telling our stories like we do yes. right now, sharing our human stories? Do you believe that may yes. be a way, and not a good way to express to each other the true struggle, like we are a normal people, like whether yes. we came from different countries as an immigrant, but still we are a human being and we have different story to share, right? Everybody has a beautiful story to tell. Georgia, thank you so much. We hope to have you again to continue our discussion. Thank you, I would love to. Thank you. Well, Shukran.